Shalom. This is your host, Pastor Enoch Piri. Welcome to Taking Dominion. You know, there are a few things I have learned about God. I've been working with God for over 30 years. And one of the things that I've learned about God is that God is not meant to be understood, but to be believed. That's number one. Number one, like I've said, God is not meant to be understood, but to be believed. Number two, God will never be understood. You know, nobody can put God in a scientific laboratory and uh, understand him. In fact, the moment you understand God, he will cease to be God. He is God because uh, he is beyond human comprehension. I want to talk about this God uh, to you today because uh, there are a lot of confusions which are going on within the body of Christ to be more specific, in South Africa. You know, lately, it has become an in thing. Almost every celebrity is becoming a Sangoma. I don't know uh, uh, what is going on, or there is the, that spirit which is hovering upon the land, and uh, some of them, they become Sangomas for three weeks, and uh, later on, they come up and say, no, I think I made a mistake. I'm not a Sangoma, you know. So, so today, I just want to discuss a few things about um, about uh, the spirit which I can call of Ubungoma or the medium spirit or what others would label as uh, ancestor worship. Before I dive into the subject, I just want to clarify one element which is largely and widely misunderstood. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about um, African spirituality, African spirituality. A uh, few months ago, I was in Asia, and uh, somebody was talking about Asian spirituality. <laughs> then, then, uh, then I went to, to Australia, and uh, I was among the Aboriginal people, and uh, somebody was talking about uh, Australian spirituality. Then I asked myself questions after all these versions of the so-called uh, spirituality. My question was, what is uh, really this spirituality? And... Uh, how do people confine spirituality to a continent or spirituality to a people group or spirituality to a, a, a cluster of people who are thinking same-mindedness? On this point, ladies and gentlemen, I want to clarify something. There is nothing like African spirituality, Asian spirituality, or European spirituality, American spirituality, whatever you can call spirituality. Spirituality is one. You know, there is uh, two worlds. There's a spiritual world and the physical world. The spiritual world is the world which is an invisible world, which can only be tapped in through man's connectivity to the spiritual being. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, that a human being is a spirit. A human being is spirit. So, so when we speak about spirituality, we are talking about the totality of a human being. A human being is a spirit which lives in the body with a soul. Let me say it again. A human being is the spirit or is a spirit which lives in the body with a soul. So when we speak about spirituality, we are talking about the totality of a human being. A human being has been given access to tap into the spiritual realm or the spiritual being. Even before I go further, I just want to clarify one very important element. You know, I go around uh, uh, different countries and people ask me questions uh, such as uh, Mfundisi or Pastor Piri. Uh, is it right for us to worship ancestors? My answer is simple. It is not right. You cannot worship a human being. Because remember, when we speak about spirituality of a human being, we are talking about the eternity of a human being, a human being that exists both in the past, in the present, and in the future. I'll explain to you a little bit uh, later, later on. Now, specifically right now, I'm not bashing anybody. I'm not attacking anybody. Of course, I've been invited to a number of podcasts where people uh, promote uh, the so-called African uh, spirituality. And uh, I was never given an opportunity to explain my 
position. And uh, to a certain extent, some of them who advocate uh, African spirituality, they even go to the extent of saying, I also believe in the Bible. The, this is the common argument. I also believe in the Bible. Now, I, I want to make it very clear that if you believe in the Bible, and uh, if you believe especially in the Lord Jesus Christ, there are few rules that you need to follow. Which one of those rules is that uh, the Bible says you can never come to the Father but through me. There, there are not many doors that will take you to the Father, Lord God. Or there are not so many ways which will take you to the Father, Jehovah God. Only one way. So you and me, if today we agree that we are Bible scholars or Bible students or we are Bible believers, then we need to agree that the Bible does not condone ancestor worship. About ancestors, do we worship them? No, we don't. We acknowledge them. I'm a Piri, and I know that there are Piris who have fallen, who have gone to sleep. And these Piris, once upon a time, they lived upon the face of the earth. Like it has been given to mankind to be on earth for 70 years. If you get beyond 70, that is a bonus. Now, those periods who are fallen, those periods who are sleeping, don't become gods when they exit this human body. They are still spirits. Remember, I said earlier on in my introduction that a human being is a spirit that lives in the body with a soul. Now, if you are dead, you are still spirit. And if you are alive, you are still spirit. Only that most people are not conscious of their spirituality while they are walking upon the face of the earth because uh, their consciousness has been taken over by the flesh. Now, now, the moment you don't gratify the desires of the flesh, as the Bible uh, teaches in the book of Galatians, that walk by the spirit so that you may not satisfy or gratify the desires of the flesh. And the desires of the flesh are very clearly Spotted out in um, Galatians chapter 5 from uh, verse 22. The Bible speaks about uh, the, these desires of the flesh or which are gratified when you, when you lift up the flesh in your livelihood. Now when we speak about spirituality, we are talking about your totality. You are a spiritual being. You are a spirit being and you don't become a God when you die. Okay, just for argument's sake. Many of us as African people, we... We cannot trace our families to the third generation. We don't know. Most of us, we don't know to the third generation. Most of us, we know our fathers, and we know our mkulus, um, our, 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 our grandfathers or our grandmothers. We don't know uh, generations beyond that. And, and uh, I, I don't see any logic. How does a person who is uh, attempting to break away from the spirit of poverty seek the guidance of uh, the so-called ancestors who also lived in the same poverty, how do you consult them to take you out of poverty? That to me does not make sense. Now I'll tell you what makes sense. What makes sense is the sacrificial lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the sins of the, world, of the, of the whole world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but to have everlasting life. Now, Jesus Christ is the way to eternity. Now, my, my, my message is basically addressing those who seem to be confused, especially those who say, but I also believe in the Bible, but I'm also a Christian and I also worship ancestors. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. The Bible says so very clearly in the New Testament. Jesus said you can never save mammon and save God at the same time. You must make a decision. Whom do you want to save today? Joshua said, as for me and my family, we shall serve the living God. What does the Bible say about uh, ancestor worship? You know, because I've said a lot, I've spoken a lot, the Bible must speak for itself. Now, remember, I'm addressing specifically those of you who are saying, I'm a Christian, and it's okay for me to go consult 
ancestors or I'm a Christian, it is okay for me to go and consult mediums or I'm a Christian, it's okay for me to go and consult Izangoma or spiritualists. I'm talking to those people who say, it's okay for me to do this. I've said it according to the scriptures. You cannot save two masses at the same time. I just want to share with you from the book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31 where the Bible says, do not turn to mediums or seek out spirits for you'll be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Now, my brother, my sister, make a decision. If you consider yourself to be a Christian or you consider yourself to be a child of God, you must allow the Bible to be able to be, to the, the Bible to, 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 to have authority in your life in the matters of your faith. The Bible. Because I don't know how one can get it right by saying, I don't believe in, 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 in uh, I be, uh, rather, by one saying, I believe in the Bible and I believe in Christ Jesus and I go to church and I also believe in, in the ancestors. The Bible is very clear about ancestor worship. By the way, ancestor worship in the Bible is labeled as a medium worship. You know, a medium spirit is, is what you would call an ancestral spirit. Or, or medium worship is what you would call and ancestral worship. And the Bible in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31 denounces the worship of mediums. The Bible is very clear. You know, we shouldn't be selective Christians who say, okay, I'm going to believe in one, two, three, four passages of the Bible and the rest I shouldn't believe in. Because the Bible is the word of God. Remember, the Bible does not contain the word of God or the words of God. The Bible is the word of God. In its totality, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is the word of God. So if you believe in the Bible, then you need to take God by his word. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6, I'll set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spirits to prostitute themselves by following them and I'll cut them off from their people. When you follow mediums and you worship foreign gods, you worship ancestors, listen to me, my, my, my brother and sister, you are actually speaking a curse over your life. You are eliminating yourself, cutting yourself from the flow of God's blessings. Yes, I do understand. The issue of worship has been politicized in the recent past. You know, where people would say, you know, why must we worship uh, this uh, 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 for foreign God? Because Jesus Christ is for the Jews. Somebody once said, uh, Muhammad is for the, for, for the Arabs. And, and someone else would say, Buddha is for people in, uh, in that part of, uh, of, 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 of India, uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, uh, people who subscribe to Hinduism, you know. It's okay. That sounds politically correct when you, when you speak it. But, but the truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is very clear about Jesus Christ, who was born in, uh, in Bethlehem, raised up in Nazareth, and, uh, and uh, he did uh, his ministry in, um, in, um, in, um, in, in, in one town, I'll, I'll remember this town, then I'll come back to you, you know, in, uh, in, in Capernaum. He did his ministry in Capernaum. Let me put this in order. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, uh, raised in Nazareth, and did his ministry in Capernaum. Now, 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 Jesus, when he was 12 years old, we see him ministering to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the Jews, to the Pharisees. And we don't see Jesus when he was one year old because the Bible is very clear that uh, his parents went with him to Egypt. What is Egypt? Africa. We have had African people in the Bible times who traveled to Jerusalem to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is, is not the God of rest. Is not the God of, uh, of, 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 of a specific or certain racial group or political entity. We mustn't confuse that. Jesus came to die for the sins of the whole world. He was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. Now, you need to make a decision. Do you want to save him? If you want to save him, it's okay. 
Or do you want to save medium spirits? If you want to save medium spirits, but then be very careful, never say that, but I also believe in the Bible. Because if you believe in the Bible, don't be selective in your believing. You need to be very intentional. Accept whatever God has said. And right now, we are speaking against uh, medium spirits. And what the Bible says about medium spirits, when you worship medium spirits or ancestors, you get cut off from the Lord. You get cut off from God. In uh, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19, the Bible says, when someone tells you to consult mediums and spirits, who whisper and muter should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Think of it. Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Remember, I've said it. I said it earlier that uh, human beings are given 70 years to live. And if you can live uh, over 70 years, that is just a bonus. And uh, while you are alive, while you are alive, you will notice that uh, your livelihood on earth is just for 70. If you are lucky, actually, if you are blessed, you know, it's 70, you know, and if you go beyond that, it's a bonus. And many people don't even make it to 70 years old. And within that period of 70, the Bible says you need to make a decision. Whom are you going to worship? You, you need to choose who is going to be your God. Are you going to worship those that have died? Those who failed to come up with solutions while they were alive on earth? What makes them special? Is it because they have stopped to exist? Is this, is this which makes them special? What makes them special? Is it because uh, they are no longer in the earth? My brother and sister, don't be deceived. When you worship ancestors, you get cut off from the land of the living. The, the, the flow of blessings are cut off. I don't care how fashionable it has become. Something which is sinful is sinful. Something which is acceptable, it is acceptable. But with ancestral worship in the body of Christ, that must be condemned with all our with all our hearts and all our strength because uh, we, can never to se we can never serve two masters at the same time. Second Kings chapter 21 verse 6, the Bible says, he sacrificed his own son in the fire, practiced divination, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spirits. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. Maybe, maybe one can ask a question, how did you get to be where we are today? Why is the church in this mess? Why is the church so messed up? It's simple. Number one, it is because uh, the forerunners of the gospel, the ones that introduced us to the gospel, they focus so much on miracles and magic. They focus so much on wonders. And the gospel of Jesus was never taught in the body of Christ. In fact, many people who call themselves Christians are not even accustomed to the Bible. They don't know the word. We were raised by spirit, spiritualists, people that were just after miracles. People go to church even today. Someone lay hands upon you and when you fall down, you feel the Holy Spirit as it knocked you down. Yet those are just emotions in many cases. I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit does not get people slain. People do get slain by the Holy Spirit. It happens all the time. But then, what does it benefit you? After being laid by a preacher, then you fall on the ground and you wake up still the same person as yesterday. What does it benefit you? Is this just a spiritual gymnastics? Or is it something beneficial to you maybe? Hence, we need to go back to the basics. The church of Jesus Christ has lost its map. It has lost its direction. And I've heard people, you know, I've got people that are connected to me, people who are into medium 
uh, uh, or divination uh, uh, spirits. They are connected to me through the work I do in the media, like in, uh, in, uh, in television and, uh, and radio. And many of them have made it clear that they receive pastors who come to them at night and consult. What kind of a pastor are you? Who would go and consult in the middle of the night from a medium for you to have more power, for you to deceive people even more? The church needs to wake up. The body of Christ needs to wake up. It's not a joke. This issue of ancestral worship or of Ubungo or, or young people getting inserted into, into witchcraft and, 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 and into uh, 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 ancestral uh, uh, worship has become so fashionable and it's not a joke. And the fingers must be pointed to the church. Because the church has not effectively communicated this gospel. Effectively has not taught this gospel. Effectively, the church has failed its mandate. <coughs> you know, a few, a few weeks ago, I was, uh, I was in Turkey. And uh, Turkey is an ancient city of the Bible called Ephesus or Ephesians. And when you look around Turkey, you don't see churches. You see mosques all around. And you ask yourself the question, what happened? You go to Egypt. Once upon a time, there was a, a Coptic church which was thriving in Egypt. Very powerful. The church in Egypt, very strong. Today you go to Egypt. All you see is mosques all around. You go up to, to Iran in the Bible times, Iran was called Persia, and, and one of the kings of, uh, of, of Persia was, um, was, was loved by God very much. One of the kings of Persia, God loved him because uh, he, he delivered the, the, the Jews from, uh, from, uh, from captivity. He delivered them, he, he allowed them to live, uh, and God considered him as, as worthy you know, one of the kings of Persia. And, 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 and in the Persian Empire, Jehovah was worshipped. But now remember Islam. Islam is about 600 years um, uh, younger to Christianity. He was only born 600 years after Jesus Christ. In other words, Muhammad was born 600 years after, after Christ. So, so, so during the time of Jesus... And uh, during the time of the Roman Empire, when the Constantinople declared the Roman Empire a Christian empire, the world of that time was a Christian world. The question that I'm getting to is then, what happened to the world? Why is the world so confused, especially the church so confused? The church so judgmental, the church is um, decreasing its power day by day. Why? You go to Europe. Churches are closing down in Germany, in Sweden, in, in, in Romania. Churches are, churches are closing down. You, you know, let alone these Muslim countries like Arab countries, which were formerly Christian colonies or Christian communities, Christian uh, uh, inst um, uh, 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 kingdoms. Europe, which considers itself as a Christian continent. Churches are being turned into museums. Others are turned into nightclubs. The question is why? It's because the church has failed its role. Come to Africa. Africa as a continent, there's no place where people pray like African people. 63% of African people are Christians. 30% Muslim. Then the other percentage is divided between African indigenous, indigenous religion, which is... Um, uh, the so-called African spirituality and, 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 the, and others like Hinduism and Buddhism, which is a very small portion on, on the continent. Now, 3% of Africans consider themselves as Christians. They pray. But now, when you analyze the livelihood of the church and analyze the way the church in Africa prays, you are going to notice something that it is more based on magic, miracles, more than the true word of God. There is this, there, there is this uh, pressure which pastors have because they want to compete with Sangomas. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a man of God called by God, stay in your lane. Walk in your lane. Power is going to come to you. Power will come to you because the Bible says uh, power will come upon you as you wait upon the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So, so in order for you to move in the power of God, you don't have to force it. Do your part and God will do the rest. Let us not move this church, the body of Christ, which we have been given by God through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Let us not drive it into witchcraft because that's where we are currently. You know, you, you, you can't tell the difference. In fact, uh, uh, those of you who grew up in Africa will agree with me that when we were growing up, magicians used to come to our schools to perform um, magic. Have you wondered why they no longer come to our church, to our schools rather? Have you wondered where have they gone to? Those magicians have become pastors. And those magicians are the ones proclaiming this confused gospel which you can't even tell how did it creep into the church. To a certain extent, once you preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ, you are labeled more as a person with no power. The power of the gospel is in its written form. And once you profess it and manifest, it comes in greatness and in power. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the end times where we critically need to watch out, where we critically need to analyze our ways, where we critically need to analyze our steps because uh, the days in which we're living in are end times, are last days, and you need to watch what you eat because what you eat will manifest through your body. And we've seen the manifestations of wickedness in our community. You know, there's no spiritual leadership in our community because the church is confused. The body of Christ has no direction. I have to say this because uh, I hear people are so scared to talk about certain things because they don't want to be attacked. I am an African, very proud African, and I love Jesus. And, uh, and, and I love Jesus not because of uh, the persuasion by missionaries. Of course, this is a story for another day, but I can, I, I can say a little bit about uh, missionaries. They, they, they messed up as well. When they brought the gospel, they brought the Bible in one hand and again a gun on another hand. They forced our people to believe in the Bible without teaching our people the word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit because the agenda was wrong. They were after the land and they took the land, yes, and they exploited our people and other group of our people were taken into slavery in the, in the, in the, across the Atlantic. Others, they went to, to, to Europe to work in uh, sugarcane plantations. It's a reality. Hence, there is so much resistance, especially from young people, when you have to tell them about Jesus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my acceptance of Jesus Christ is not by word or by deed, but by revelation. Once you come face to face with Jesus Christ, once you allow him in your life, once you allow Jesus in your space, the Holy Spirit will drop Things in your spirit to agree with your spirit and confirm that Jesus is Lord. That's why you, you can't teach a person to love Jesus. The moment the Holy Spirit comes upon you, automatically you will love Jesus. The moment the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, automatically you will have that Jesus expression. I believe in Jesus and I believe in the Holy Spirit and I believe in the Bible, in the word of God. Now, now remember, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible speaks for itself. It doesn't need an interpreter. It doesn't need anybody to explain it. The Bible is self-explanatory. It explains itself. 
It doesn't need me or any preacher to explain it. The Bible explains itself. And you must ask yourself a question. Any activity that you do in your church or in your congregation or in your personal space as a believer, is it in agreement with what the Bible says? If the answer is yes, it is in agreement of what the Bible says, praise God. But if the answer is no, then you need to check your lifestyle and check what the Bible says. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in the book of Joshua 1 verse 8, that do not let this book of law depart from your mouth, but meditate upon it days and nights, so that you may be able to do what it says, so that you may be successful in the things that you do. Your success comes as a result of reading the word of God, meditating upon the word of God, a revelation of who Jesus is. And this is what we are praying for. May you have the revelation of who Jesus is. May you have a revelation of who God is. Don't confuse the two. <coughs> As I'm coming to an end, I just want to emphasize that uh, this broadcast or podcast, this message, is specifically tailored for those who are confused. Those who don't know whether they are Christians or they are following medians. If you don't know where you stand, I can help you for you to know where you stand. Jesus is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is revealed through the New Testament. And Jesus was prophesied 700 years before he was born by many prophets like Isaiah, just to mention a few like uh, Nahum, Jonah, uh, 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 even Moses, in the book of Genesis, we hear the Bible speak about Jesus, the tree of life which is in the middle of, of, of the garden. So Jesus is not appearing as a, a surprise in the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament or, or 2,000 years ago. He was prophesied 4,000 before he was born. He was prophesied 6,000 before he was born. Jesus was prophesied. The seed of a woman was prophesied. And today... I believe in Jesus, who is the giver of eternal life. And when you believe in him, you accept him. You shall not die, but you shall live. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for watching this broadcast. And uh, perhaps you've got questions and uh, you are confused, perhaps, of what I've said and you need more clarity. You can uh, email me with the email address appearing on the screen and uh, my WhatsApp number appearing on the screen, and you can even inbox me on my social platforms which are appearing on the screen. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you, and keep on winning.